One of the most common questions I always get asked about about when I first began to be a teacher was when I had the interview, what were the safeguarding questions? So safeguarding is something that's really, really important in primary schools. And we're going to give you a little overview about what safeguarding is and then jump into a few questions that you might get asked in primary school interviews and what really good answers are for them. So let's get straight into it and start off with what is safeguarding. So safeguarding is the practice of keeping all children safe. It literally is what it says on the tin. That you're safeguarding, you're guarding the children, you're keeping them safe. Now that can take the form of safe from external threats, so things outside school coming into school, and you've got your policies about you know making sure the gate shut, making sure doors might be locked, making sure anyone that comes in has a visitor's badge or a staff badge, that kind of thing. That's all the stuff that you know safeguarding is in terms of outside of school, but it's also keeping children safe inside of school, and sometimes that can be the form of keeping children safe from each other, keeping the children safe from other people that might be causing them harm. That can be in school, outside of school. It's keeping them safe from absolutely anything. So physical abuse, emotional abuse, online abuse, neglect, whatever it might be. There's all sorts of different things that you can keep children safe from. And there's all sorts of different things that children need keeping safe from. And so it's one of those things where it is all encompassing. If you wanna look more about what safeguarding is, I'd recommend you go and read the Keeping Children Safe in Education document. Now this is what is kind of updated most years and it's what all safeguarding runs off, all safeguarding follows this document. So if you give that a read and that will kind of cover absolutely everything about what safeguarding is and hopefully you can learn a bit more from that. But we're going to jump straight into then the interview questions. So we're going to go through five different interview questions that you might get asked and the best responses for them. Number one is going to be how are teachers responsible for keeping children safe? Now, teachers are ultimately responsible for the, the keeping the children safe in their classrooms that are in their care. It's important to remember that keeping children safe is everyone's responsibility. It's everyone in school, not just the teachers, but teachers are ultimately responsible for the children in their class. It's important to remember for this question that as a teacher, you have a duty to report any incidents you might have seen, witnessed, heard about, and also anything you might be suspicious about, you might be worried about report everything as a general rule and then you know what if you're slightly overcautious about some stuff as long as you're following the school policies and reporting them in the right way they'll either get investigated and there'll be nothing needed in doing or they'll get investigated and there'll be an action that needs to be taken and either way you've done the right thing by reporting it teachers have a duty to report each and every single incident that they either are worried about i've heard about seen all sorts so just make sure you are reporting anything that you see or hear making sure that when you are reporting this you're doing it through your school processes so obviously the relevant authorities are told you might have a line manager you might have a safeguarding lead, you might have a head teacher you have to tell whoever it might be just make sure you're following your school's policies and you've got the best way forward number two is going to be what is your attitude to child protection and safeguarding so this one is all about showing that you are open to safeguarding and you realize the importance of it in a primary school now it is the most important thing in a primary school if children aren't safe, they're not going to learn anything. If they're not happy, they're not going to learn anything. So learning and safeguarding, you know, learning definitely takes a backseat com compared to safeguarding. If children are safe and happy and content in school, then you can start doing some learning. So it's important to show you that obviously you realise how important it is. You realise that you have to keep yourself open to all children's concerns. And if a child does raise a concern with you, make sure it gets reported as soon as possible. You can also make sure at this point in your answer to this question that you're showing that you are obviously understanding how serious an issue it is, but also that it's something that you can say, look, I look forward to showing that I have the right responsibility, I have the right attitude towards this, and I can show that through dealing with incidents such as X, Y, and Z, and you can give some examples of incidents you may be, have dealt with in the past or that you have heard about other teachers dealing with, and therefore, you know, again, showing you're on the ball, you know the topics, you know what you're talking. Number three, how can you personally support the school's safeguarding agenda? So this is where you can talk about what you've done in previous schools, maybe on previous jobs, previous placements, talking about what you've done in those schools to support their safeguarding agenda and therefore obviously the same thing for you. It will help here if you have done a bit of research, which I'd always recommend doing. Do some research about the school, maybe pay it a visit. If you don't pay it a visit, at least have a look on the website, look at their safeguard information, look at their previous Ofsted reports, any kind of information you can get about the local area and what's going on. For example, my school is near a canal and so one of the most important safeguarding issues we have is Obviously, things like water safety, safety awareness about around that canal, making sure children know that it's not somewhere they should be swimming in, jumping in, anything like that during the summer holidays. And it might sound silly, but that is always at the top of our list of the reasons. There's a bunch of other things too. There's some higher, there's some lower, but being safe around water is always something that's right near the top of our safeguarding list because of the area we're in and because there's a canal two roads away from the school. 
And that's something that you, if you do your research before you come into school to an interview at my school, you would probably mention. And I can't remember if I did mention it or not. I'd like to hope I did. Um, but I definitely did my research about safeguarding before I went to my interview and hopefully that shone through. This is something that, again, I would recommend doing for your schools. Do your research, have a look at what they've got on their websites, what they talk about, and then bring this up in the interview. So how would you support it? Oh, well, I saw on the website that this school has a either an issue with or has a real focus on this safeguarding area and so in my previous school I worked on this safeguarding area I did this this and this or I'm going to I plan on doing this this and this at your school to help with this safeguarding area and then obviously kind of run it from there hopefully they'll be interested in that and ask you maybe some follow-up questions and you can really delve into more detail about what you've got planned number four tell me how you de dealt with a safeguarding issue at a previous school so again running through a safeguarding issue that you've had to deal with in a school either that you dealt with on your own or you dealt with maybe with a mentor what you did, obviously making sure confidentiality is kept going at all times. It might be in a school in a local area where someone might know someone, so keep names out of it, but making sure that you are, you know, raising the issue that was raised, you're informing them of the issue that was brought up, you're informing them of the actions you took, obviously in line with the school's policies, in line with the keeping children safe in education document. You did all that. What was the outcome of that? You know, was it a outcome that you were pleased with? Was there something you feel like you can do differently next time? why is that if you if there was something you wanted to do differently what was it why could you change it but yeah generally talking about what happened what you did and what was the outcome and reflect on it what could you do differently next time and finally how do you deal with bullying in this school hopefully straight away and talk about anything you've seen on the website about their anti-bullying policy about what the school's policies are with reporting incidents talking about using things like cpoms and hopefully once you've gone through all that then you they'll have a good idea that you've again shown that you've read the information that's available, you're taking it seriously and you're ready to go. Hopefully this has helped you with your safeguarding interview prep. I'm just going to give you four quick tips at the end of this video that hopefully will keep you going throughout. Number one, read and familiarise yourself with the school's safeguarding policy. So, so important, make sure you've had a look at it before your interview. Number two, in your answers, provide examples as much as you can, making sure obviously they're real examples that you actually have. If you don't have them, then don't worry. But if you have got those examples, provide them as much as possible. Number three, being honest with your answers. So, so important. You want to get started being honest. I mean, it kind of is an obvious one, I'd say. Why would you not be honest? But yeah, being honest with everything that you say. Four, mindful of confidentiality. So safeguarding raises a lot of confidential issues. And these are so, you know, there's nothing more important than keeping that confidentiality. So please make sure you do obviously keep that you can talk about these incidents, but, you know, keep any names and identifying features out of it. Hope this helped you guys and I will see you very soon.